Have you ever noticed that McCall is never actually shown shooting a firearm in the movie? Pretty crazy. In this scene, he gets creative with a powder-actuated nail gun, or by its trademarked name, the Ramsit Master Shot. It's actually a real tool used for construction purposes that uses a .22 caliber charge to drive nails into steel or concrete, but in McCall's hands, it becomes a deadly weapon. This movie marks the first major role for Johnny Skirtis, who plays Ralphie, the security agent in this scene. The scene was actually filmed in a real convenience store in Boston, Massachusetts. The crew transformed the store into the film's fictional home mart for the shoot. Drive director Nicholas Winding Refn was the original choice for the movie, but left the project one month later when he could not agree to contractual terms with the producers on his deal. What do you think about the turn of events in this scene? McCall is in a tight spot, so he rigs a booby trap using a microwave and some propane tanks. Who knew propane and a microwave could be such an explosive combination? But wait, there's a catch. The power is out, so how is McCall going to set the trap? And even if he can get it set, how does he know when the propane will explode? Turns out McCall is a bit of a MacGyver and manages to get the microwave working using some clever tricks. But hold on, there's still more. Some critics have pointed out that the science behind the trap is a little sketchy. Apparently, Metal propane tanks and a microwave don't exactly go together like peanut butter and jelly. But hey, this is Hollywood we're talking about. Anything can happen. In the end, it all comes down to timing. McCall sets the trap to go off precisely 40 seconds after the microwave starts. And wouldn't you know it, the bad guy walks right into the break room at that exact moment. It's like something out of an action movie. Oh, wait. As McCall takes out his three main targets, they all ask him the same question. Who are you? It's a testament to his mysterious, enigmatic character, and the slow motion shot adds a lot of tension to this scene.
the screenplay for The Equalizer was featured on the 2012 Blacklist, a list of the most liked unmade scripts of the year. Talk about a successful pitch. <laughs> Did you know when Denzel Washington joined the project, he gave Robert McCall a whole new backstory that included obsessive compulsive disorder? To make sure he got the portrayal just right, Denzel met and interviewed real life sufferers of OCD before shooting. Denzel Washington suggested Antoine Fuqua for the director's chair, and we're sure glad he did. The last time Denzel Washington worked with director Fuqua, playing a corrupt cop in a crime thriller training day. He won a Best Actor Oscar. Denzel Washington learned brutal tricks from Navy SEALs for this movie. He said in an interview, We had this ex-Navy SEAL guy training us. They do use pens and stuff. Eyeglasses is a big one. You fold that thing up and jab right in the corner of the eye. That's a real weapon. The Equalizer was stuck in development hell for years before finally making it to the big screen. It went through multiple writers and directors before Antoine Fuqua took the reins. Denzel Washington admitted in an interview that initially he was reluctant to commit himself to this movie because of the difficulty finding a director suited for the job. Although pleased that the end result was a box office hit, he made it no secret that he only made this movie due to contractual obligations. The armed store robbery scene is actually one of the most iconic moments from the entire film. It's the moment where the audience realizes just how much of a badass Denzel's character is. Did you know that Gerard Butler was almost cast as Robert McCall? It's hard to imagine anyone else in that role. The test screenings for The Equalizer received the highest scores and most positive reactions of any R-rated Sony film. That's definitely something to brag about. The Equalizer is based on the classic television series of the same name that aired in 1985 and starred Edward Woodward. That's right, this movie is a modern take on an old favorite. 